Hey, it's Max, the original Flowgrammer. Have you ever used Reddit to research problems that a group of people might have? It's a great way to discover opportunities for building products and services, like that next side hustle you're trying to build to get out of the rat race. You could be monitoring the feature requests and complaints for an incumbent app, for example, an overpriced workflow automation tool, or be monitoring local regions, even cities, to identify opportunities in your hometown or on the other side of the world. Indie hackers and product managers have been doing this kind of discovery work manually for years. So Zubair, a member of our global community, thought this is a pretty good use case for an agentic workflow. NNN is great at grabbing a bunch of data and organizing it, and AI is pretty good at aggregating and summarizing it. So check this one out. Hey Zubair, welcome to the show. Hey Max, good to see you, man. Pleasure to be here. So for the folks who don't know you, would you mind introducing yourself quickly? Absolutely. So my name is Zubair. I have a background in engineering. The past year and a half, I've focused my content on all things AI, but specifically the past six months, I've been full throttle on NADN and AI automations. And then also I have a school community that's centered around NNN and creating automations for businesses and just learning how to take advantage of this amazing platform that we have. So Zuber, what have you got to show me today? So I'm really excited to show you guys this amazing workflow that I created. Again, the point of this workflow is to actually solve real world problems that small businesses are facing. Very cool. So Zuber was showing me this off camera before we started recording. I'm really excited about this one because it's basically identifying like business opportunities, right? Based on the problems that people have. And this is something that I used to do my Self manually on Reddit or using tools like Gummy Search and stuff. I remember paying for tools that would allow me to do it manually myself. So, Zuber, please take it away and show us what you built. All right. So, let me go ahead and test the workflow. And then I'm going to go ahead and walk through step by step and click on test workflow. Awesome. And there you go. As you can see right now, obviously the execution is manual, but you can do a schedule trigger or have other triggers as well. But right now it's going through and processing all the notes, updating our Google Sheets. And then also we have a sentiment analysis. I've shut off the Slack and Gmail because I don't want to receive a bunch of stuff. But as you can see right now, the workflow executed properly. And this is the Google Sheet that we have right now. So we have a bunch of columns here, the subreddit, subreddit size, post, upvotes, original post, summary, and potential solution. And as you can see right now, we're working. So let's go ahead and actually walk through a step by step and explain what's going on. I will kind of go through the most important notes. What's Shit happening that. right now, the probably the most important note here is the Reddit note. The amazing thing about it NNN is it already has that integration. So once you create this note, what's happening is we're searching through posts inside the subreddit called small business. Now, the small business is actually one of the top subreddits on Reddit, where small businesses actually go, they, they post their problems, that they're, the issues that they're running into. So this is a gold mine for people who are looking for solution for businesses because businesses provide their problems, they're posting it there. So as somebody who is looking to monetize, this is great because now you're trying to solve real world problems that the businesses are posting themselves. I mean, and I think it's not just that they have the problem, it's that as a small business owner, they took the time to go onto Reddit to post that problem. That's going to you know, validate that issue is more than just a small issue. They went on and took that friction to try and get that answer, which means they probably also have willingness to pay. Absolutely. Yeah. Obviously, small businesses don't have time to like figure things out on their own. So that's where it's an opportunity for others who can utilize these amazing tools now to actually provide this, try to solve a frustration. Like you said, I mean, it takes a lot for a business to take time out of their business and go ahead and post somewhere, which means they're looking for a solution. They're desperate at that point. The keyword, this is very important. This is what what this node is going to search in this subreddit. And right now I have the keyword as automation. This could be whatever you want. You can actually change this keyword. It doesn't have to be automation. It could be something like, I don't know, coffee shops or whatever it may be, right? I would suggest not toggling this return all because this is going to send a lot of data here. So you can, the great thing is you can limit the amount of data that's coming in out of the Reddit here. So I've put just two because for this demo purposes, but what you could do is if you have a schedule trigger, you can do every day, you can do five posts that you're like searching through. So that way you have like the top posts that are coming through. And then additional field, you can actually sort by what's hot, what's relevant, what's new. But that's sure. another great thing. Now you can even further filter the data to make sure it's meeting exactly what you're looking for. So these are the yep. two hottest posts in the small business subreddit that have the word automation. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So actually we can increase the limit a little bit here. And let me just run this live so people know that this is working. Now this time I change it to four. If I click on test step, 
So now I'm going to get four posts. You can see in the view, you have four items here in the JSON. So this is where you can read the title. And obviously we're getting a lot of data here. That's where we need to now further go ahead in the next step and try to filter and grab the data that's relevant to us. So that's okay. the beauty of NADN, where now you can actually refine the data that's coming out. What's happening next is I'm just basically putting this F note and that's where now I am further filtering. So I'm saying, hey, I want to make sure that the posts have at least two upvotes because you want to make sure that the post is being interacted with. The next one, I'm just making sure that the self text, meaning the post is not empty. I am filtering and make sure that the time is converted to ISO standard. So that way it's readable. And then I'm also, here's another great operation. I'm saying that I am filtering this. So I'm saying that if this post occurred, I want to make sure that it's not sending me the data forever, right? I want to limit it up to six months from today. It's, so that's another great thing here that we're doing. Now we can further clean this data. If I click on test step here, there you go. So now we have this nice true branch, which is going to further filter the Reddit post that we're looking for specifically. If note, the output from the if note, this is where now we can do a set note to clean the data and grab the exact things that we're looking. So in our case, I'm looking for upvotes. I'm looking for subreddit size, the original post the subreddit, the date, and then the URL. So these are the only five things I'm grabbing because as you can see on the left-hand side, I have a bunch of stuff that's coming out of the if note. You want to clean the data. And set note, to be honest, is one of my favorite notes because it does such a great job of cleaning the data so that way you can do a lot more with it. Now, this is something I recommend to, to everyone. Guys, before your AI step, if you're getting raw data from an API, there's going to be probably most of the time a lot of data that is not relevant for getting your task done. That could confuse your AI. It's definitely going to slow it down. It's definitely going to costs more, which doesn't matter if you run it once or twice, but if you're doing anything at scale. So this step that Zubair is doing here, very important. And I think definitely a best practice, like send in what you need to, nothing more. Would you agree, Zubair? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, set note is one of my favorite nodes in NNN because what you're doing is now you don't want to overwhelm yourself with all of the data and not only yourself, you don't want to overwhelm the AI agents or the further notes that you're putting with all of this data that's coming as unnecessary because it's going to cost you more money, obviously the AI agent to process it. But not only that, it's just going to get everything confused. And I also like things to be beautiful and clean, this is a perfect way to do that. Makes sense. So let's go ahead and test this step. And you will see what I'm talking about, about the beautiful and the clean. This is all the stuff that's coming out from the left-hand side. And if I click on test step here, look how pretty and nice and organized it is. On the right-hand side now, I have four items and I'm only grabbing five things. Upvote, subreddit size, original post. And this is, by the way, matching my Google Sheet here. Now that we have our data cleaned up, now we can go ahead and now use AI agents in our AI nodes to do further things with it. The next step, I'm creating a tools agent, a uh, conversational agent here. What I'm doing is just, I've kept the prompt very simple. I'm saying decide whether this post is actually describing a business related problem. I'm just grabbing the original post here. The only thing this AI agent needs to output is a yes or a no. That's exactly what we're doing, right? Because we want to be able to filter out further and look for something because a lot of people post a lot of things on Reddit. So you want to make sure you're filtering out the actual solution or an actual problem that somebody's facing. Let's go ahead and test this step. I'm obviously using my OpenAI chat model here. It's up to you. You can use Claude or whatever else you are using used to. So there you go. Now we have four items and out of the four items, three were yes and one was no, meaning that three of these posts have, was actually a business that's looking for a solution and one of them was probably just a random post. Now that we have the output from the AI agent, now we can actually merge that output along with that data that was coming in using our set node and merge node is also a great node here. So we're just combining all of that data one from the yes output from the AI agent and then the rest here. The next step is we're just using this filter node to be able to filter the uh, output from the AI agent and also that's data that's coming in because we want to make sure that it's using the posts that have that yes output from AI agents. Let's go ahead and play that. And once there you go, so now we're good to go here. So now we're sending three items because as we saw earlier, one of the posts had item that was related, not necessarily to a business problem. Okay. Now uh, we're adding additional notes here. The first one is a summarization chain. This is just summarizing the output here because we want to make sure that we're not sending the entire original post. And then the open AI note here. So a quick note on the prompt here is just saying based on the following Reddit posts, suggest a business idea or service that could help solve this problem. But not only this, 
exist other problems that are similar to this because now mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out posts that are going to be common amongst most small to medium sized businesses. So this mm -hmm. gives you even further refinement and therefore it gives you the ability to do more stuff with it. Let's go ahead and process these. So I'm going to do the summarization chain first. That's again, same thing. I'm using the OpenAI chat model. And then obviously we're grabbing some additional data from our filter node here. And then we're going to go ahead and use our merge node to combine all of that data that's coming in and we're going to process all of that and upload it to our Google sheet here. This is exactly what the output looks like. There you go. Perfect. Very so cool. now you can see we're just merging all of this stuff together and it's outputting all of that data into our Google sheet. So let's take a look at actually what's going on inside these Google sheets. If we click right here again, and we're doing an append row operation here, if you have your credential up, you can grab this exact sheet, which I've named Reddit business ideas right here. And I'm mapping each column manually, right? So I'm just grabbing all of that information from my previous merge node, and then I'm bringing it here. And that's exactly what's happening. And on the right hand side, as you can see, all of the data is cleanly outputted. And now if we go back to our Google sheet, there you go, right? Everything is there, including the subreddit size, the original post, the upvotes, and then including the actual link to that particular Reddit post here. So as you can see, this is actually real, right? Like you can see somebody has already posted this mm -hmm. and this has 1.9 million members. A lot of interaction is happening here. And that's a great thing about posting the actual Reddit URL here. So that way you can actually go and check out the original post. We have our original post, the post summary that we used our summarization chain there. And then this is where that potential solution comes in. This AI is actually outputting all of the solutions for this problem that this business is actually facing. Again, you can you can do a lot more with this. Obviously, I've added a sentiment analysis here. Just again, this is optional. You can send this to your Slack channels. You can send this to your Gmail. If you're saying, hey, you know what? Any negative sentiment analysis, the output that's coming in, I want to send myself an email. So that way I have that data as well in there. So that way I can do further things with it. This is kind of, again, for inspiration, you can do a lot more with this could be a gold mine for finding a potential solution and monetizing. Definitely. I think like with so many solutions these days and a lot of people are like, well, someone's already done that and whatnot. But I think like the thing to remember is there's regionalization and localization. There's not every customer knows every single product. I think especially in the, with AI and stuff, you know, a single operator identifying a small problem that VCs and stuff would never touch rapidly yeah. with low code tools and stuff, deploying that and getting a couple hundred customers that could pay more than being a startup employee, but it's just the total available market of that problem isn't big enough for some big team to go in. But now, again, with you being able to identify with AI and build tools easier, you can probably go serve that pain point. And then the result is people getting products that are hyper specific for them. You get an income and everyone's happier with the power of AI. But I'm curious, Uber, what's next for this guy? Where do you think you'll evolve this as you build it out? Now, what I would do with this, honestly, is have this as a schedule trigger. And then you can run this on a weekly basis. Now, after this Google Sheet, because now you have all this great data that's all in one space in your Google Sheet with all of this information. Information. What you could do next is add additional AI nodes in here to be able to say, hey, you know what? They, all of this data that's coming in, find the common problem that these mm -hmm. businesses are facing, right? And then from that, now you can do things like come up with a solution for the most common problems that you see that's coming out of these business or these businesses are posting. So that's where, like I mentioned, you could do a lot more with this where you can find the common data, you can find the common problems. Because, you know, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. You can find the necessities and the problems that these businesses are facing. That's the best way to start any business is to find a problem that somebody is facing, come up with a better solution. And like you mentioned earlier, obviously, these small to medium sized businesses, they don't have the budget to go to bigger companies and have thousands of dollars just to talk to them before they can even come up with a solution. Now you can be a one person business, a two person business. Now with these amazing tools that we have at our disposal, a one person could start with two clients and make a living off of that. That's where you can get going. I think the really cool thing, Zubair, if, if looking at this workflow as well, is realizing I can change a trigger, change that Google sheet to a set node, and I've got an AI tool that some other AI agent can now use this like multi-agentic solution just as a tool. Again, the combinatorics of what's possible just, just yeah. like ex expands. And just one um, more thing I wanted to point yeah, out please. again, you can play around with this. This doesn't necessarily mean this is the best possible way to create this workflow, right? This is just a option. You can add, for example, instead of an AI agent, another node that will be better to solve this. For example, same thing. You don't have to add sentiment analysis. You don't have to add like a summarization. So there's a lot you can do. These are just, I always say that 
when I create these workflows, this doesn't necessarily mean that this is the one only solution, right? There's multiple solutions to these things, depending on what you use case. I can't agree more. I think one thing I always tell newbies is like imperfect workflows create value all the time. I'll probably say like most of our whole user base's workflows are not perfect. They're likely good enough. And then that person like went to the other hundred things that they have to do that day, iterating on it and improving it over time. And I think that is absolutely true in this AI space. The models we're using today, three months from now, probably gonna be using different models. Probably gonna absolutely. be using there's going to be some new pattern or something. And I see that all the time, like in my community, when I post something, there's amazing how people come up as like, hey, by the way, I found this better way to do this. And I learned from everybody because like we're all new in this space. That's the great thing about like working with others, even if they're completely beginners. They're like, oh, by the way, did you guys know how to... I figured out a way to do this. And then everybody's like, ah, that's amazing. We never thought about that. So yeah. same thing in my work. My job is to talk to flow grammars and it's teaching me all day, just like yourself. Super. If people like what they see, they're inspired. They want to see more and get more and be flow gramming along with you. Where can they do that? I have a YouTube channel where you can go ahead and check out. Like I have tons of tutorials there. Also, I have my school community. That's where I always say that the best way to learn is learn together. Our, the community is a great space where you can go back and forth with people and ask questions. We have daily calls that you can jump in and ask myself or others who are hosting these calls. We have live builds. So there's great opportunity there to jump in and learn. Very cool. Zuber, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy guy between the, the school community and building and consulting and all that. So I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to have you back on soon because I know you're building all the time. I'm guessing you're going to have a really cool use case uh, to share with me real soon. Thanks so much, man. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for having me, man. This is a lot of fun. Thank you. It was absolutely my pleasure. Ciao. Really cool stuff, Subaru. Thanks for that one. Oof, this was a good one. 2014 homemade strawberry liquor from Vuko Stefan himself. Thanks, Vuko. And that's all for today. Oh, wrong one. So that's all for today. Um, where's the brown, our uh, brown glass? It's in Germany, but to separate the glasses, we want them mixing. Ooh, I think the lid was on that one. Sorry, Schultz. What I really like about Zubay's pattern is how easily it can be adapted and changed. Change your ingest sources, change some of the filtering logic, change some of the ways that you're analyzing it afterwards. And I mean, you're talking about use cases across dozens of roles, right? Another great thing that uh, Zuber highlighted is, again, if this was a use case that was running 10,000 times a day, I'm sure you could optimize it. It was a relatively quick and dirty workflow, but it's getting him insights today. And I think, especially when you think about these automations that we want to set up today to improve our life, it's got to be something you can knock out in an hour or two. Who can block out that kind of time in this modern world? This video is part of my work at the studio, where I share the story of Flowgrammers from across NNN's global community. I'm Max, the original Flowgrammer. Drop a comment on what you'd like to see next, and don't forget to mash that subscribe button. Happy, happy, happy Flowgramming.